Hi, and welcome to our experiment. We appreciate that you volunteered some of your time to help us in our research. My name is Jackie, and I will be guiding you through this slide deck. You will be hearing about our project, why we're doing it, and how you'll be able to help us. First, I'd like to share some housekeeping information about this experiment. Your participation is voluntary. You are not receiving financial compensation, gifts, or grades for participating in the study. You are free to refuse to participate. Thanks to you giving some of your time, we're able to do research, which we'll speak about in a minute, and we're grateful for that. As we go through these slides, and as you start engaging in the experiments, you are welcome to ask questions. Feel free to ask Magda, who will be next to you for the study. If you don't feel comfortable participating in the study, you are free to stop. If you have any concern, either during the study or later, you can contact Dr. Gia Benelli by email at giabba at cs.niu.edu. In this study, we've created a software to help people make sense of data generated by cellular automata. So first, I'll tell you a little bit about what a cellular automaton is. Then, we'll look at the software so you can see how it works, and in particular, how it can support you in making sense of data. Our main question is, how good is the software for you? That is, can our software help you visualize and get insight from this data? Are there some barriers? To find out, the last part of this slide deck will summarize how we need you to use the software. Because cellular automata is quite long, we're going to abbreviate it into CA. I'll use two examples to give you a feeling about what a CA is and what it looks like. In our first example, imagine that we want to track the evolution of a forest fire. A CA can give us a computer program to do that. A CA represents the space as a square grid. That is, if you look at your forest from above, you look at it like a square grid. Each of the squares is called a cell. That's why it's a cellular automaton. It thinks of the world as being made of cells. In this example, remember that we want to understand forest fires. So each cell is one part of the forest. We have three options for what can go in a cell. First, a cell can have a tree. So here, you're seeing all the trees in our mini forest. Each tree is looked at explicitly. Second, a cell may be empty. You can think of this as a clearing in the forest. And finally, when you study forest fires, you need to know which trees are burning. So the last possibility is for burning trees. Overall, what you've seen is that a CA represents the space as a square grid. And each one of these squares contains something. A tree, an empty space, or a burning tree. Because a CA is a computer program, you can run it, and that will show you the dynamics. Think of it. You don't just want to see that there are trees and nothing happens. You want to see and understand how the fire spreads. So the CA can update the content of each cell and show you that spread. For the sake of this example, assume that a fire starts at one site. That's the beginning of the simulation. Time step t equals zero. The CA can then compute the next time steps. The fire doesn't magically teleport through the forest. It physically has to move. When a tree is burning, the trees around it are likely to catch fire too. A CA is particularly good at that. It updates the content of each cell based on what happens in the neighbors. Here, at time step t equals one, two of the neighbors may have caught fire and the fire continues to spread. At t equals two, some more trees may have started to burn. At t equals three, the fire continues to spread. A tree doesn't burn forever though, so eventually it's just turned to ashes and the CA can replace that cell by empty. Overall, you've seen that a CA represents the space as a square grid, where each cell has a value like a tree or empty. These values are updated as the simulation runs based on the values of neighboring cells. Here, the updates say that a tree may start burning if it's got a neighbor that's on fire. Also, if a tree has been burning for some time, it's eventually gone and that space becomes empty. 
A CA doesn't normally show you cute icons changing because it gets hard to track that. The visualization shows the values as colors. Here, a green cell says it's got a tree. A red cell says it's burning. A white cell says it's empty. So that grid shows you the same initial configuration we've looked at before. One tree around the center is burning. The dynamics are shown on the left. They tell you what can happen to a cell from one time step to the other. So, from one time step to the other, two things can happen to a tree. Either it remains a tree because nothing happened to it, or it turns into a burning tree. From one time step to the other, a burning tree either keeps on burning or is totally burnt and that cell becomes empty. Empty cells can only stay empty. Let's now run the simulation. At time step t equals 1, some neighboring trees may have caught fire, so you will see them turning red. We can keep running the simulation. Some other trees may start burning and turn red. And eventually the tree that started it all will have burnt to the ground so it becomes empty while the fire keeps spreading. Let's summarize all that you've seen. A CA represents the space as a square grid of cells, each having a color telling you what's inside. Over time, the cells are updated based on what's around them and you can see them changing color. We'll now look at another example briefly to make sure that you get the main concepts. In our second example, we'll use a CA to represent the dynamics of a sand pile. The idea is simple. You pour sand onto something and it forms a pile. It's just gravity. The sand has to fall down, may land on the stack, or roll down the slope and make a little avalanche. I'll give you a few seconds to think about what may be in a cell. A cell either has sand or it's empty. Let's say that white cells are empty and the orange ones have sand in them. Now, I'm going to run the simulation and what you should see is that the sand falls. Let's see how it keeps falling. And falling. Here, the grain of sand at the top wasn't supported well enough, so it slided sideways. That's how you end up with a dune. And if you give it one more step, it may fall further. These two examples illustrated the main principles of CA. Square grid of cells, color to show the content, and changing over time based on neighbors. Note that CA can have probabilities, because we don't always know exactly what happens. For example, if a tree has a neighbor that's on fire, it's not a guarantee that it'll burn right away. It may depend on lots of things. Some trees may be wet, the wind may be blowing some way. A computer program cannot represent everything that's going on in the real world, so it often has probabilities. For example, we may say that a tree has a 50% chance of catching fire from a neighbor. This means that if you run the simulation one time, you may see a part of the forest burn. But if you run it another time, it may not be the same part of the forest that burns. Because it's probabilistic, every time you run it, you can get something slightly different. Let's summarize what the rules of a CA look like. When you run a CA once, you're going to get a few time steps worth of data. In this example, we let our forest burn for a few time steps. Each time step is a colored square grid. Look up this example. I'll give you a few seconds to think of the following in your mind. Can you find one cell that never, ever changed value throughout the simulation? The two cells at the top right and the one at the bottom left remained empty. Everything else has changed. To answer that question, what you had to do was look at the different grids and compare the colors. When there are probabilities, you can run a CA several times. Let's see what we could get next time we run it. As you see at the bottom, the fire may have taken a slightly different turn if we run it again. Here, we say that we have two replicas. 
we ran our CA twice. One replica is at the top and one is at the bottom. We're now done showing you what a CA does. We'll now continue and tell you about the software. We've created a software to help you visually inspect the data produced by CA. So, somebody ran the CA, made a bunch of files, and we want you to be able to see them in a helpful way. You remember how you had to scan the four colored grids to figure out which cells didn't change? We want to make that sort of task easy for you. In the experiment, we'll give you some tasks, ask you to use our visualization, and to see whether it's actually helpful, we'll ask you to do the same task using a simpler visualization that people currently have. In short, our software has two visualizations, the new one we've designed and the one people already have. We'll now look at them in turn. Let's start with the simpler one. To show you the simple visualization, we'll select, as example, a burning forest with five replicas and 25 steps. On the left, you see that there are five replicas. That is, the simulation was run five times, so it created five files. One, two, three, four, and five. Within a file, you can move through the time steps from zero to the final one, which here is 25. To move, just use the arrow keys on your keyboard. Here, I'm going to push the right key on my keyboard. I'm seeing the next step. One more. I'm now at step three. Let's do one more. Step four. Here, I can see a bunch of trees burnt down. It's all getting dark gray. I'm going to look at what happened in another data set. For that, I just need to click on it. Here, I'll click on forest underscore replica two dot txt. I'm seeing the initial state in that replica. Let's move to the next one. One more. And there we go. So you see that to move within one run, I just use the directional keys on my keyboard, right for the next time step, left for the one before. To look at another replica, I just click on that file. I'll pause briefly to give you time to digest that information, and I'll start telling you about the new visualization that we made. With the basic visualization, if you have many time steps or many replicas, you need to slide through all these and compare colors. Our new visualization is different. Our new visualization doesn't have a slide or a choice of replicas. It condenses all that into one visualization. Imagine that you have 24 time steps. So for each cell of your CA, it has 24 steps. We can't show all 24 steps for each cell at the same time on the screen. So let's cut these 24 steps into eight equal segments. For each cell, we'll show the majority from each segment. Here, the majority for the first segment is green, then red, then green, and so on. As you can see, a cell is cut in eight segments, so we just need to color each segment. And voila! This shows us that in the initial part of the simulation, that cell was mostly green. Then it turned mostly red, then mostly green, and remained mostly red for a while. Let's give you another example on more cells now. Here is a CA of nine cells, from time step zero to time step seven. We'll now show you what it would look like with our new visualization. you see the nine cells. Inside, they are now subdivided into eight parts. Take a few seconds to identify which cells haven't changed at all through the simulation. These four cells haven't changed because they have the same color throughout. Can you take a few seconds to identify which tree burned last, assuming that white means empty and red means burning? Again. 
You're trying to find which tree was the last one to burn. It would be the top left tree because it transitions from red to white later than any other one. When you have several replicates, the same cell may not be in the same condition across the replicates. One replicate may say that a tree is burning, whereas in another one, it is not. So you should know whether a value is a good consensus, meaning that replicates tend to agree on it, or if there is a lot of variation about that value because replicates do not agree. We show it to you by the width. A color with a small width means there isn't much variation. The replicates tend to agree that it's the majority. A color with a larger width shows that there is more variation and replicates have more disagreement about what the value should be. This is what a 25 by 25 grid may look like. It's fairly crammed, so let's look at the left corner in particular. Here is a zoomed in view of that corner. Let's discuss the central cell. You see that it starts green. The width is moderate, so replicates tend to agree that during the first one eighth of the simulation, that cell is mostly green. Now you see the width larger. There is more disagreement among replicates about what happens to that cell. That may be because it burnt down in some replicates but not in others. The disagreement is getting massive in that part, showing that replicates really don't agree. Now that you've seen how we represent information, we'll briefly show you how you can interact with the visualization. On the left, you have three tools. I'll now show you what they do from bottom to top. The main idea is that they can help you to either find the type of cells you want or to know what is really going on within a part of a cell. I'm going to click on a part of a cell in the main screen and show you what happens. I click on a dark green quadrant of that cell. The quadrant has small width, so I expect the replicas to mostly agree. The bar chart in the bottom left confirms that. It shows me that the prevalence of dark green values is much higher than anything else, and the standard deviation is small. I'm now going to show you how to use the center tool. Using that center tool, you can click on the parts of a cell that you want to keep. Here, I'm going to click on the last division of a cell, because all I want to see is the end of the simulation. The result is that I'll see just this, and the other parts will be made dark. In other words, you can filter by time slice. A lot of the simulation has turned totally dark because it wasn't in the time slice I selected. You can see a few bright green spots. This shows you the cells in which the simulation mostly ends up with one tree still standing. I'm going to click on one of them to see what happened. Look at the new bar chart at the bottom left. You can see that the green is the most common state here. The standard deviations are small, so replicas agree. I'm going to deselect that time slice to get back to normal. There we go. I have nothing filtered now. I'll show you the last tool at the top left. This is also a filtering tool, but it filters by state. It will show you all the parts of cells that contain the state you clicked on. I'm going to click on the green cell for the alive trees. All filtering tools show you what you picked in red. This shows I'm filtering the visualization by state. The visualization shows you everywhere that has that state. By doing a quick scan, you can conclude that this state appears in all cells at some point. That is, none of the cell is totally dark. All cells have at least an alive tree at some point. I'm going to add another state to my filter. This way, I will see which parts of the cells have both of the states I'm interested in. 
There are now more parts of the cells that are black. This makes sense because I narrowed down my search. Instead of parts that had any green, I asked for parts that had both green and dark green, so there are fewer of them. You've now seen all the functions of the tool. I'll now tell you what tasks we'll want you to do with the tool. We have several data sets. On each of these data sets, you'll be doing three tasks, both using our new visualization and using the simple one. That way, we'll know which visualization is better depending on the task and data set. I'm now going to tell you briefly about each task. The first task will be to identify cycles. That is, we will want you to show us the cells that end the simulation with the same color as they start. For example, if they start green, then at the end of the simulation, they should be green too. The second task will be to tell us where you think that there is a lot of variation across replicates. The final task will be to show us the cells that don't seem to change color at all. When you come for the experiment, if you have any question about the tasks, we're happy to clarify them for you. However, note that we will not show you how to do them. We cannot help you to use the tool. The point of the experiment is to see how you'd be able to use the tool to get these tasks done based on the overview given in this slide deck. We've discussed all the aspects we had to cover. You know that a CA has a square grid with cells changing over time based on neighbors and probabilities. The simulation may be run several times, giving several replicas. To visualize all this, we developed a new visualization. In the tasks, you'll be using both the new and the classic visualizations. We look forward to seeing you for the experiments.